good morning everyone we are going to take up a very important topic related to the morphometric analysis of drainage basin now this morphometric analysis involves calculation of certain parameters which have quantitative values that gives us idea about the geomorphic evolution of the drainage basin of drainage basin an individual drainage basin or a watershed is a finite area whose runoff is channeled through a single outlet so if you look into this figure you can see that this dotted line marks the boundary of the drainage basin which you can say it's the catchment area or the watershed and in its simplest form a drainage basin is an area that funnels all runoff to the mouth of the stream this means that whatever rain is where precipitation is there in this entire area all of which this will drain and come out at this place so the drainage basins <coughs> sorry may be delineated on a topographic map by tracing their perimeter or the drainage divides a drainage divide is simply a line on either side of which water flows to the different streams now you can see beyond this line the water will not flow into this so this this is the highest point that <coughs> beyond this there would be the slope would be in different direction and so the water here would drain towards this side and here this is going to drain this side so this entire area that collects the rain water and contributes it to a particular drainage channel is called the drainage basin or the catchment area the drainage network is constituted of the trunk and tributary streams that drain the basin area so this is the main or the trunk stream which is flowing and these are the tributary streams that are contributing their water to the trunk stream and this is these are the confluences or the points of meeting of the tributary and the trunk rivers now just in overview to look into the development of the drainage basin or the, the development of the drainage within a basin so there are basically it is the initial phase where the drainage develops and as the time passes by and as this uh, area it, it is exposed on the surface the area is uplifted so this drainage keeps on maturing and ultimately you get a mature uh, drainage with time now <coughs> just describing the physical features of an object just like describing the physical features of an object we can also describe feature uh, a drainage basin qualitatively as well as quantitatively qualitatively we can say the shape of the basin is so and so the size is so and so the drainage pattern is like this the geomorphology is like this however a geomorphologist needs the quantitative description of a basin so morphometry in general is a science that deals with the quantitative measurements of shape or geometry of any natural form so the drainage basin morphometry denotes the measurement of three dimensional geometrical properties of the land surface of a fluvial erosional system now this quantitative analysis it was initiated by an scientist named as Horton in the year 1945 and uh, it was his pioneer work followed by a number of other important geomorphologists like Streller, 
Shum, Gregory, and there are so many other scientists who have <coughs> been uh, doing this work. Now, the advantage of uh, using this quantitative analysis of the morphometric analysis of drainage basins is that we can use the available survey of India topo sheets or high resolution satellite data or the aerial photographs of an area and <coughs> these can easily quantify some of the parameters without our visiting a particular area. This exercise gives us quantitative description of the drainage basin rather than a qualitative description that can vary from person to person. Now, the morphometric features basically they have been categorized into three types. The linear prop those having the linear properties, they are in unidirectional, dimensional or the one dimension, aerial properties having two dimensions and the relief properties that are having three dimensions. So using <coughs> this technique uh, we are studying several different components such as the stream segments, the basin length, the various other basin parameters determining the area of the basin or using the area of the basin, then altitude, volume, slope, profile etc. Now all these <coughs> indicate the nature of development of the basin. While carrying out the morphometric analysis, a number of parameters have to be determined. These have, uh, like I told just now, the, uh, have the linear properties. So one of the important parameters is determining the stream order. Now this parameter was, uh, has been proposed uh, by several workers determining how to determine the order of a stream. So like Estreller, Horton, Shreve, Hack, they have proposed different methods. But the one which was proposed by Estreller in 1952 is the one which is being commonly followed. Now in this <coughs> case, uh, the one which is followed by, uh, which was proposed by Estreller, who was a professor uh, in Colombia. So <coughs> he introduced a numbering system which he called stream order to quantify the hierarchical branching networks of the drainage basin. Now, he, what he means is that stream ordering refers to the determination of hierarchical position of a stream within a drainage basin. Now, in this, as you can see here, the <coughs> ordering of a stream begins from the finger trip tributaries. These are the finger trip tributaries. So it begins from this point and uh, these tributaries, they do not have their own feeder. Now this is, has been named as or uh, denoted as the one having the stream order of one. Now once this is one first order stream, this is another first order stream as and when these first order streams meet at a point, you have the beginning of the second order stream. Now, <coughs> as till the point the second order stream meets another second order stream, it continues to be a second order stream. At a number of points, you will have first order streams meeting this second order stream, but this will remain as second order until unless another second order stream comes and meets. Now beyond this point of confluence, you have the third order stream. Now when this third order stream meets another third order stream, then you have a fourth order stream. So if we have this stream gauge or if we are measuring, 
so we say that the water is coming from a fourth order stream now here beyond this point you can see even a third order stream is coming and meeting it but this continues to be a fourth order stream so <coughs> this is uh, again which is shown here so as you this is the drainage basin and as these tributaries keep on meeting and this the uh, water budget increases and you have the higher order streams as you move in the downstream direction the drainage network transports water and the sediment of a basin through a single outlet which is marked as the maximum order of the basin and conventionally the highest order stream available in the basin is considered as the order of the basin so now in this case here at the mouth we are getting a fourth order stream so we say that this entire basin is a fourth order drainage basin the size of the river and the basin varies greatly with the order of the basin so higher the order higher is the order of the basin larger is the size now <coughs> just going back suppose this is a here we have a third order stream so this would become the drainage basin of this third order stream however for fourth order the size is this much big so as the order keeps on increasing the <coughs> size of the basin keeps on increasing similarly we can see here that this is a fifth order basin so here you can have first order streams meeting to form the second order second order joining to form the this green one is the third order then these third order meeting to join the and form the fourth order basin and here the fourth order basin joins to form the fifth order. so at this point if we say what is the order of basin so the order of basin is fifth order however at this point of confluence the basin order is fourth order and here the basin of order the order of this basin is third order now another linear property uh, next to deciding the order of a stream is the stream number the stream number means the total number of stream segments present in each order now it is represented by nu where u is the order of stream so number of so a particular order of a stream so now you have first order stream second order stream third order for so if you count the total number of first order streams the number is 13 so this basin has 13 number of first order stream six numbers of second order two third order stream and one fourth order so the basin is a fourth order basin then another linear parameter is the is length of the stream stream length it is <coughs> the length of the stream channel which reveals the size component of the drainage lines the total length of the stream in a particular order most significant this is the most significant hydrological feature of the basin as it reveals the surface runoff characteristics stream of relatively small length are characteristics of areas with large slopes generally the total length of the stream segment is maximum in the first order streams and decreases as the order of a stream increases you can see that here you have in this basin you have maximum number of streams are first order that is 13 and as the stream order increases the number of streams keep on decreasing then the second <coughs> two dimensional properties if we consider then for a drainage uh, basin the first and foremost is the area of the basin so whatever the area it covers that can be determined so that will give us the area of the basin then the perimeter 
we know the perimeter is the measure of the outer boundary of anything so in this case it is the measure of the outer boundary of the watershed that enclosed its area it is measured along the divides between watershed and may be used as an indicator of watershed size and shape then <coughs> come the three dimensional parameters basically it is the height is included so these are the known as the relief properties so we know what is relief it is the difference in the elevation between highest point of the watershed and the lowest point on the valley floor is known as the total relief of the river basin so whatever so naturally here there must be some highest point here at this point and this is the lowest point on the floor so the difference between the two gives us the relief of the basin then the another parameter relief ratio was determined by shum in 56 and <coughs> it is a number calculated to describe the grade of a river it has been defined as the difference in elevation between the river's source and the river's confluence or mouth divided by the total length of the river or stream so it is the ratio between the elevation and the length of the river now this ratio it gives the average drop in elevation per unit length of the river it has been observed that areas with low to moderate relief and slope are characterized by moderate value of relief ratios low relief values ratio low relief ratio values are mainly due to the resistant basement rocks of the basin and low degree of slope so by measuring these we can have some inference regarding the nature of the bedrock present in the basin area the another number parameter called as the ruggedness number was proposed by streller which says it is a product of the basin relief and the drainage density and is u usefully and it usefully combines slope steepness with its length the low ruggedness value of watershed implies that the area is less prone to soil erosion and has interest intrinsic structural complexity in association with the relief and drainage density so <coughs> this gives us an idea about what is the type of erosion taking place in the drainage basin then another the parameter is the gradient ratio which is indicator of the channel slope and it enables us in the assessment of the run off volume of a drainage basin now while while carrying out morphometric analysis a number of parameters have to be determined and these have been categorized into basic parameters derived parameters and shape parameters first of all we'll be discussing about the base basic parameter that have to be measured so the basic parameter of a <coughs> basin would be its area its perimeter and the length of the basin so the basin length corresponds to the maximum length of the basin and sub basins measured parallel to the main drainage line i think we will just uh, this is the you can see here right from th this point this line is f f uh, following the the maximum length of the stream or uh, following the pattern of the stream so the stream length <coughs> or the lu it is the total length of streams of a particular order the stream length of all sub basins of various orders normally measured using 
the survey of India topographical maps. So we measure what is the length of this first order stream, what is the length of this first order stream. All the first order streams are measured, so that becomes the total length of the first order stream. Then we measure what is the length of the second order stream. So like this is second order stream, so all the second order streams are measured and <coughs> similarly third order, fourth order and so on. Then another parameter is the maximum and the minimum height. So naturally the maximum height is here and the minimum height in this drainage is at this point. Then <coughs> a number of parameters I derived using the basic parameters. I will be discussing some of the important parameters which are commonly used. <coughs> it will not be possible to discuss each and every parameter which the scientists have come up with, but some of the important ones, uh, one of the most important is the bifurcation ratio. Now this parameter is the ratio of the number of streams of a given order so that is NU to the number of stream segments of the higher order that means this is the first order stream and this is first plus one that is second order so the ratio of the first order to second order ratio of second order to third order third order to fourth order fourth order to fifth order like this we determine the ratio and uh, this parameter is determined. Horton and Streller suggested that bifurcation ratio is the measure of the degree of branching within the hydrographic network. Again, <coughs> people have suggested further uh, modified this bifurcation ratio. Sorry. <coughs> where direct bifurcation ratio has been determined. It represents the number of fluvial segments of a given order that flow in segments of next higher order. Then another parameter is the bifurcation index. It is the difference between the bifurcation ratio and the direct bifurcation ratio, ratio of the bifurcation. So it is the again the difference between the bifurcation ratio and the direct bifurcation ratio. Then another important parameter is the stream length ratio which has been defined as the ratio of the mean length of the higher order stream to the next lower order stream segment. The stream length ratios have been calculated as Ri is equal to Lu upon Lu minus 1 where this Lu is the stream length of an order U and Lu minus 1 is the stream length is segment length of the next lower order. Then another parameter is the mean strength mean stream length which is total number of stream of a particular order divided by the number of streams of that particular order. Then <coughs> another parameter named as RHO coefficient has been proposed by Horton and this is the ratio between the stream length ratio and the bifurcation ratio. So you have the stream length ratio divided by the bifurcation ratio. It is considered to be an important parameter at, as it determines the relationship between the drainage density and physiographic development of the basin and allows the evaluation of the storage capacity of the drainage network. Now this is an important uh, parameter. By doing this we can have an idea regarding the storage capacity of a particular basin upstream of certain point. 
Now, sub-basins with higher values of RHO have higher water storage during flood periods and as such attenuate the erosion effect during elevated discharge. Then <coughs> stream frequency or the channel frequency is the total number of stream segments of all orders per unit area. So total number of stream segments, total number divided by area, it gives the stream frequency. Then there is another parameter which is the drainage density. Now drainage density is measured as the total length of the streams. Here it was the number of streams, here it is the length of the streams of all order divided by the area of the drainage basin. Now these parameters, stream frequency, drainage density, they are very significant and important. The drainage density is an expression to indicate the closeness of spacing of channels within a basin. The drainage density is controlled by climate, lithology, relief, infiltration capacity, vegetation cover, surface roughness and runoff intensity. The amount and type of precipitation influences directly the quantity and character of surface <coughs> runoff. So here you can see in this diagram two contrasting basins where it has this has got a very low drainage density whereas the drainage density is very high in this case. So the low drainage density results in areas of highly resistant or permeable subsoil material, dense vegetation and low relief. That means if the high area is highly resistant and there is a dense vegetation, then the area will have low drainage density. Whereas high drainage density would result in a weak or impermeable subsurface material having sparse vegetation and <coughs> mountainous relief. Low drainage density leads to coarse drainage texture while high drainage density leads to fine drainage texture. The amount of vegetation and rail font absorption capacity of soils influence the rate of surface runoff which affects the drainage texture of an area. So now what is drainage texture? It is the ratio between total number of stream segments of all orders to the perimeter of the basin. Earlier <coughs> it was the stream frequency was the total number of streams divided by area but texture it is the <coughs> it is divided by the perimeter total number of streams divided by perimeter it has been recognized that infiltration capacity is an important factor which influences drainage texture and considered the drainage texture to include drainage density and stream frequency. Drainage texture depends upon a number of natural factors such as climate, rainfall, vegetation, soil types and rock types, infiltration capacity, relief and stage of basin development. So Smith in 1950 classified the texture as very coarse where the <coughs> values are more than two, sorry, less than two, less than two, coarse when it is two, between two and four, moderate, between four and six, fine, between six and eight, and very fine when it is between eight to ten, and such an area would be known as having a bad land topography. So in this image you can see the contrasting drainage texture here it has got a fine texture and here the texture is not as prominent as seen on this side then <coughs> there are a number of shape parameters which are 
determined and are important to understand the characteristics of basin. One such parameter is the elongation ratio, which is the ratio between the diameter of a circle of the same area as the drainage basin. Now, whatever is the area of drainage basin, taking that area, we reconstruct a circle and the diameter of that circle <coughs> and the basin length, the ratio between the diameter of that circle and the basin length is calculated that gives the elongation ratio. So, it is <coughs> given as diameter upon length or the constant has been observed which is 1.128 into under root of area divided by the length. Now, the values of elongation ratio varies from 0 that is highly elongated shape to 1 which is circular. That means, the if the basin is circular, it will have <coughs> the value of elongation ratio of 1. Values close to 1 are typical of regions of low relief areas, whereas between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 are associated with high relief and steep ground slope. So, we can, if we determine these parameters using the survey of India topo sheet without going to the field, we can have an idea about the shape of the basin. The another parameter is the circularity ratio, which is expressed as ratio of the basin area to the area of a circle having the same parameter as the basin and is expressed as rc is equal to 4 pi into a upon perimeter square. The values of circularity index varies from 0, it will be for a straight line, to 1, that would be for a circle. The higher is the value of circularity ratio the more circular is the shape of the basin. So, by determining this, we can have an idea about the shape, the circularity of the uh, <coughs> basin and it is very important because the circularity ratio is influenced by the length, the frequency of streams, the geological structures, land cover, climate relief and slope of the basin. Its low, medium and high values are indicative of the youth, mature and old stages of the life cycles of tributary basins. So, this is an important derivation which well we can or uh, inference which we can make out of determining the circularity ratio. Then another parameter, the form factor of a drainage basin is determined and is expressed as the ratio between area of the basin and square of the basin length, where FF is equal to area upon L square. So, <coughs> the value of form factor is always less than 0.7854 for a perfectly circular basin. For a small, the smaller the value of the form factor, more elongated is the basin. So, if we want to quantify as to how much elongated a basin is, we can determine the this parameter or this parameter is helpful in determining it. And the basin with high form factor have high peak flows of shorter duration. Now, this is very important. If there is a precipitation, there are fact flash floods, then the basin with heavy uh, having high form factor will have high peak flows of shorter duration, whereas elongated sub watersheds with low form factor have lower peak flows of longer duration. So, it can help us in assessing what would be the situation in case there are flash floods in the area.
then another factor compactness coefficient is determined and is the ratio of perimeter of watershed to the circumference of circular area equal to the area of the watershed the compactness coefficient is independent of the size of watershed and dependent only upon the slope now these morphometric parameters which we have determined are the morphometric analysis that is carried out is helpful in characterizing the drainage network in comparing the characteristics of several drainage networks in examining the effects of lithology structure rainfall on the drainage network now we will be discussing specific relevance of some of the morphometric parameters as highlighted and suggested by some of the geo scientists like this rho coefficient which we discussed as the ratio between the stream length ratio and the bifurcation ratio is considered to be an important parameter as it determines the relationship between the drainage density and physiographic development of the basin it allows the evaluation of storage capacity of drainage network sub basins with higher values of rho have higher water storage during flood flood periods and such attenuate erosional effect during elevated discharge similarly the stream frequency is related to the permeability infiltration capacity and relief of the sub basins the sub basins having higher relief relatively higher stream frequency are indicative of relatively higher relief and lower infiltration capacity of the bedrock so we can have an idea about the what is the infiltration capacity of a basin by determining these parameters then drainage density as we discussed is one of the important indicators of landform element as it provides a numerical measurement of landscape dissection and surface runoff it is considered as a parameter determining the time of travel by water the low drainage density <coughs> generally results in areas of highly resistance or permeable subsoil and <coughs> the high drainage density is resultant of weak or impermeable surface runoff we have already discussed the low drainage density leads to coarse drainage network while high drainage density leads to fine drainage network the drainage density <coughs> controls the speed of runoff following the spell of heavy rains the greater discharge of drainage density the more the surface runoff the drainage density decreases with the increase of stream orders the higher variation of bifurcation ratio and the va values of less than 0.6 of circularity ratio suggest the presence of youthful streams in sub basins lately morphometric analysis has been utilized for various geological and geomorphological purposes and we have uh, utilized this quantitative parameter to effectively delineate the present day till cover till that is uh, the glacial deposit covered areas of a region so this helps us in deciphering those areas which are covered by till without even going into the field and at times it becomes difficult even using the satellite data it is evident that the unconsolidated unstratified and heterogeneous till material is highly pervious now because of the pervious nature these areas show a poor development of drainage network and thus there is a very low drainage density in those areas the drainage density affects the concentration time and hence the magnitude of the peak flow the timing of discharge events in the form of lag time has been related to the basin morphometric characteristics increase in drainage density suggests increasing flood peaks 
Similarly, decreasing in drainage density generally suggests decreasing flood volumes. One of the important <coughs> controls of drainage density is exerted by the infiltration capacity of the overburdened material. A long concentration time implies more opportunities of water to infiltrate. Now, if the water, it takes a longer time to move through the area, there is an opportunity to infiltrate provided the subsurface material facilitates infiltration. So, as <coughs> unconsolidated and stratified heterogeneous angular till deposits covering the glaciated and deglaciated regions have high infiltration capacity, there is little overland flow and the channel development has been inhibited, as is evidenced by the low drainage density. So, apart from the geomorphic uh, features, this uh, these geomorphic indices, they are also used for understanding the level of tectonic activity or neo tectonic activity in the area. For these, some specific parameters have been suggested and they are used like the bifurcation ratio which we have already discussed earlier. Then there are parameters like asymmetry factor, transverse topographic asymmetry, basin elongation ratio, valley floor ratio, long profile, stream gradient, length ratio, maximum concavity, etc. It has been observed that <coughs> the bifurcation ratio if it lies between 3 to 5 for watersheds, it suggests that there, there is less control of geologic structures and they do not have a dominant influence on the drainage pattern. However, the higher values of say about 7, 8, 9, they suggest that the area is neotectonically very active. Then the other parameters is the transverse topographic asymmetry. This parameter shows the lateral tilting of an area. Now here <coughs> for a given segment of a stream, the cross valley asymmetry and its drainage basin is described as the ratio of the stream distance from the stream channel to the middle of its drainage basin and the distance from the basin margin to the middle of the basin that is dA upon dA. Now this is dA. dA is the distance between the stream channel and <coughs> the middle of the drainage basin. So this line marks the middle of the drainage basin. So the distance between the middle of the drainage basin to the stream. So, this becomes dA and from this middle point to the margin of the basin is the dD. So, the ratio between dA and dD gives us the transverse topographic asymmetry and it has been used effectively for understanding whether there is a lateral tilting due to neotectonic activity in the area or not. Then another parameter is the valley width height ratio. <coughs> this can be used to define relative uplift. The shape of the valley profile is commonly linked to the rate of uplift in tectonically active area. As higher the rate of uplift, the more incised is the valley cross section. It basically describes the maturity of the value, valley. The broad valley shows high valley to floor width to valley height ratio associated with tectonic cusins because lateral erosion has had time to occur. Now, <coughs> the ratio is between the <coughs> valley floor width to valley height. So, if there is new tectonic activity, there would be more of incision. So, the ratio would be different and if the value, value has become mature, 
then there is lateral erosion so the valley will broaden so <coughs> if the conversely the low ratios are seen in steep narrow valleys associated so they are associated with recent tectonic movements then another parameter is the asymmetry parameter or the asymmetry factor it permits to establish the lateral tilting of a basin with respect to the main water course this index also includes direction of asymmetry suggesting areas and directions of possible differential neotectonic activity is also sensitive to uplift and subsidence of discrete blocks versus broad tilting so these parameters are specifically they have been designed to infer the neotectonic activity in the area similarly one of the parameters is the basin <coughs> elongation ratio then uh, it provides information about the degree of maturity of the basin by quantitatively describing the planimetric shape of the basin so the drainage basin it has been observed are uh, in tectonically active areas they are more elongated and tend to become more circular with the end of uplift once the new tectonic activity ceases the trend is to become more circular and if that persists the basins become more and more elongated so these are few of the parameters which i have discussed as i told you there are a number of other parameters which are derived out of using these basic parameters so in a nutshell we can say that the morphic morphometric analysis of a drainage basin is an effective tool to quantify the drainage characteristics of a basin without actually visiting the area it helps us to understand the structural control on the evolution of a basin it can quantitatively compare the different basins we can compare different basins quantitatively knowing their basic parameters and one of the important observations is that it helps us to know the infiltration and surface run off characteristics of a basin which is very very important if we want to <coughs> uh, go into the hydrology of the drainage basin this also can help us in deciding the sites for installation of check dams so that the there is more infiltration of water recharging of ground water etc thank you and so these are some of the references that have been taken into consideration and i hope this will give you an idea regarding the importance of morphometric analysis thank you